In this video, we'll look at what Gareth Soloway, who's perhaps one of the most effective predictors of Bitcoin's price in the past two years, had to say about the market crash. He made several predictions for Bitcoin, the crypto market, gold, ETH, and some other cryptos. We need to listen to him simply because he is one of the very few people who predicted the market crash after October highs. Everyone was laughing at him for his outrageous claims and yet, he stood by them. After looking at his interview, I'll also look at some more very important news for the crypto market, so make sure you stick till the very end. First, Gareth began by looking at the Bitcoin chart and analyzed it, making some very important predictions. So basically, we have a, the chart, which uh, you're right, you know, we, we pierced the 20,019.5 high from 2017. We got a nice reversal candle. So again, what you can see here is when you got below, you had this beautiful reversal candle. That was short term bullish. Now, what we've gone done since then is almost nothing, right? Two, four, six, eight, nine days where we've basically been going sideways. And and for me, I look at that and I say, okay, we're still holding this 19, 5, 20,000 level from 2017. That's a positive. That goes into the positive column. What I don't like is how long it's taking to start to push up. So I'm still have a slight positive bias for a near term bounce here. But to be honest, it's getting long in the tooth. And and, and what the, the common saying, at least in stock markets, and it really applies to any asset, is that you don't get a long time to buy lows, just like you don't get a ton of time to buy the high or to short the highs. And so we're it's getting a little to the point where like, you know, everyone that wanted to get in here is probably in. Now, why hasn't it started to bounce up? So I'm still optimistic that we could bounce back to about 25,000. I have this, this trend line here, which is that low from the Terra Luna collapse. But I'll tell you, if we start really going below this 19.5 again, you got to think that $12,000, $13,000 target is back in play down here, which to me, that is a major, major, major level. He then talked about the exact period when he expects Bitcoin to bottom out. He was referring to the past cycles and said that I'm kind of in the camp where past cycles in Bitcoin, it usually takes about a year. So that would put us October, November. So it's just past the summer. But I do think that that this downside will be complete in about that year period. So so that's what I'm kind of eyeing myself is that, all right, well, we're already at 20,000 ish or so. You, ha you still have another, you know, we still have July, August, September, October. Yep. So basically five, six months in October, November. All we need to do is basically get down to 12 or wherever the low is. And then I think you have that time frame of past cycles bottoming out. That's where this one likely will as well. And I say likely because you just don't know. But also keep in mind that we have a scenario where after the, it bottoms out, past cycles have chopped sideways and up and down and up and down for long periods, like another six months yeah. before you really start that next incline. So, so just be aware of the past cycles and how that likely will give us an insight into this cycle and look at the daily chart for S&P and talked about his targets for it. He said, if you look at the daily chart on, on the S&P, we still haven't gotten to my first target. So first target is around 3385, just below 3400. It's the pre COVID lows. We're going there. I mean, again, whether or not we have more bounces along the way, we probably do. But that's going to be the first big level for this market where the Fed is unwinding all the stimulus. They're sucking it all out. It only makes sense that the S&P goes back and retests that pre-COVID high. He then talked about the U.S. economy and how it's been slowing rapidly. Before we look at what he said about it, let's look at the latest report from World Bank about the biggest economies of the world. In this report, they said that, Global growth is expected to slump from 5.7% in 2021 to 2.9% in 2022, significantly lower than 4.1% that was anticipated in January. It is expected to hover around that pace over 2023-24 as the war in Ukraine disrupts activity, investment, and trade in the near term, pent-up demand fades, and fiscal and monetary policy accommodation is withdrawn. Now that is something that is truly terrifying and I'm honestly quite surprised that a lot of people continue to ignore this. Now let's look at what Gareth said about it. And then the bottom line is the economy here in the U.S. is slowing and it is slowing very, very quickly. And that's going to put us in a position where the Fed may have to stop and wait a few months and see if does the economy perk up or does it slide into a recession or, or a deep recession? If it slides, I mean, so my projections are this, is I think by year end or early 2023, we are in a recession. And if if the if the inflation 
numbers come down from, let's say, eight, nine percent, let's say back to four or five percent and unemployment because of the recession spikes, let's say to seven or eight or nine percent, the Fed will in 2023 start printing and stimulating again or at least lowering interest rates. He then moved on to talk about gold. He also compared gold's recent performance with Bitcoin. The crucial thing is that gold has been doing pretty well when compared to silver and other metals. It's doing great this year, especially compared to Bitcoin. Now, I believe that Bitcoin will win in the long term, but till now, this year, gold has won over Bitcoin when it comes to giving good returns to its investors. Now let's look at what Gareth said about it. I think gold has performed amazingly well. And, and let me give you my case to this and you can decide if it has any weight. Okay. So number one, um, gold is still positive slightly, just slightly, but positive for the year. That's compared to Bitcoin down, what, 50% or more. Um, we have the U.S. markets are down 20, 30% um, or so. And gold, again, is holding its value. Now, the fact that gold is surging to the upside is, is very perplexing to a lot of investors. But I want to show you why, right? So, and I want to show you why it's so impressive what gold is doing. So number one, it's already broken out and it hasn't failed. It hasn't come back inside of here. Number two, we know two things. Number one, when the dollar goes up, generally gold goes down. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at what the dollar has done since the start of the year. Look at the DXY. Since the start of the year, the dollar has surged from here all the way up. And what's gold? It's still net positive for the year. Now, what about 10-year yields? We know that when yields rise, at least for the last 20 plus years, gold has also go down, gone down. So if you just looked at yields in the dollar, you'd be like, oh, gold's got to be getting crushed. It's got to be down 10, 20 percent on the year. And if we go to the 10-year yield, take a look at this. I mean, yields have surged too. But the bottom line is, right, I mean, the dollar is eventually going to fade. Yields, if I'm right, and the Fed has to turn on the printing presses or at least lower 10-year you know, interest rates again, then, then gold is setting up to have a major, major move up. So I'm still very bullish on gold yeah. at this point. I think that Bitcoin is getting to that area where it's like, okay, now it's, now it's got a lot of the fluff out of it. It's starting to get attractive. Gold is already attractive. Gold is, is a safer play. I sleep a lot better when I'm invested in gold versus invested in some other you know, assets at this point. Talking about Ethereum, one really important thing we need to remember is that E could take off faster than Bitcoin this time around. This is because Facebook has begun testing ETH and Polygon NFT on its profiles. It says here that if deployed widely, users will be able to connect their crypto wallets to their Facebook profiles. We know how big Facebook and Meta are. If it does go as well as they're planning, we can expect ETH to blow up in the coming months. Now coming back to what he said. So Ethereum, it has had a bounce and a decent bounce at that. I was a little surprised it didn't tag this lower support line right here. It got really, really close before its bounce. But this is a big, big level on Ethereum, right around $815. If it breaks that, then you have your next level down here at around $500 and then possibly even lower. So $815 or so or $800, huge, huge level. You do have a bottom in right now. But again, are we going to hold it? That's going to be the big question. And again, I'm not sure, but but Ethereum is getting very attractive as a long and listen, holding cryptos as a long term investor is very, very tricky um, because you just don't know about the volatility. But these are finally getting in my wheelhouse. I was warning when we were at 65 or 69,000 on Bitcoin, we're finally getting to levels where I wouldn't buy a big chunk. But I think nibbling, you know, 800, sub 800 on, on Ethereum and then buying at five and buying at three, you're going to put yourself in a position where if I'm right and these cryptos do survive, and I'm talking about best of breed here, best of breed is so important, Bitcoin, Ethereum, then you're going to make a lot of money in the future. To summarize, Gareth Soloway is long-term bullish on Bitcoin and Ethereum, but he expects that they'll both take a while before we see them take off again. He thinks gold is a safer haven right now and that he sleeps better when he's invested in gold in a bear market like this one. Now let's move on to some big news from today. Earlier today, El Salvador invested even more money into Bitcoin. They did after losing almost $60 million on their crypto bets. That's a huge deal and it just goes to show how confident he is about the crypto market. Also, the crypto giant Binance's CEO said that he believes the value of crypto is increasing despite the bear market. He said, As for myself, I do believe the value of crypto is increasing.
The number of use cases and the number of people using it, the utility value of it, is increasing, but the markets are volatile. Also, Bloomberg's Mike McGlone seemed very optimistic himself. He said, I think some of the best assets will be gold, US long bonds, and Bitcoin. The great reversion is just getting started. Right now, I fully expect Bitcoin to trade lower. I don't know how much lower, but what I fully expect is that when we see the foundation form, which is going to happen, Bitcoin and Ethereum should come out ahead because they've outperformed for so long. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. Thanks for watching till the end. As always, if you liked it, please share it with your friends and family. Also, please like this video and leave a comment about your predictions for the crypto market. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.